Well, hello, folks. Today, I want to talk with you briefly about the story of humanity and the deception that is behind the New Age movement and all false doctrines. Now, remember, in Genesis 3, this all started in the Garden of Eden. God had created the world as good and he made mankind in his own image. But this state of paradise was broken when humanity fell and ate from the forbidden fruit. The Bible describes the serpent was cunning and he deceived Eve and then Adam chose to disobey God when they ate from this forbidden fruit. Now this plunged humanity under the curse of sin and death and is the reason we find ourselves under this curse today. It's the reason that the world is broken around us. It's the reason that we make bad choices. It's the reason that we're naturally dead in our sin and subject to decay and death and disease. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And a few verses later it says, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Under the first Adam we are all in the curse of sin and death. But under the second Adam, in Christ, by his obedience, many will be made righteous who trust in him. We are broken, creation is broken, and we are naturally in a state of rebellion against our Creator until we turn in faith to Jesus. The problem is and was choosing self, self-worship above God in an attempt to become like God. It's a theology or a religion of self-worship, and that's what it all comes down to. The Bible describes the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This was the seduction in the Garden of Eden, the worship of self above God. Now, this is exactly the same philosophy that's found in the New Age religion, which is so prevalent in our society today. Now, how is this similar, you ask? Well, we only have to compare the three lies that the serpent presented in the Garden of Eden. He said, God's word isn't reliable. He said, you will not die. And you will be like God. Now, if you look into the New Age movement, the same lie is told for each one of these points. They say, one, the Bible isn't God's word. Two, we will live forever, reincarnation. Or three, we are gods and goddesses. So you can trace it back to exactly the same lies as were told in the Garden of Eden. That God's word isn't reliable, you can't trust it. You will never die if you take from this fruit. And you will be, you will become like God. And it's a key point to remember that in so many of these things, it all comes back to the very same lies as were told in the Garden of Eden. And how the, the enemy mirrors and copies God's true promises. Because we are promised that if we do trust in Jesus Christ, we will have eternal life. So many of these truths of the true doctrine of the gospel of Jesus Christ are copied and inverted by the enemy. Remember, this is a spiritual battle and it's a very real battle. And so we need to make sure that our mind isn't being corrupted or deceived by the lies of these false religions. All false religion have this idea of self-elevation. They have this idea of ascending so that you can become like God or 
doing so many good works so you can work your way up the ladder to be with God. Self-ascension, the Kundalini in the New Age, that movement up the spine to open the third eye, that climbing, that ascending, it's all the same thing. To work your way up to God, to merit your salvation, to self-ascend. Now, only the Christian gospel is different. Only the Christian gospel is unique, that we must deny ourselves and trust in Christ. Not that we can work our way up to salvation, but that God, Emmanuel, God with us, in his great love, came down to earth in the man of Jesus Christ, God made flesh, and lived that meritorious life, that perfect life that we could never live, that he paid the penalty for our sins and makes us righteous through faith in him. Now, rewinding back to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they fell into sin and they hid from God. They became ashamed of their nakedness. But God, in his love and mercy, provided a covering for their nakedness. He sacrificed an animal. This to, to cover their sin and shame, he called out to them, Where are you? Where are you? He covered their shame with that animal sacrifice, which was a foreshadow, a foreshadow that the, both the wages of sin is death, but also God's grace would cover our nakedness and shame in the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. So right there, early on in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, you can already see that foreshadowing that God would provide that sacrifice to cover our sin and shame. And we see many different types, typologies of the first gospel uh, in the book of Genesis. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who was sacrificed for our sins. The sacrifice had to be made for our forgiveness. John Stott says, The problem of forgiveness is constituted by the inevitable collision between divine perfection and human rebellion. You see, sin breaks relationships. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they, they lost their peace with God. They lost their peace with each other. Sin breaks relationships. The gospel restores relationships. Reconciliation both vertical and horizontal in the gospel. Through the gospel, we are reconciled back to God and with each other. You see, since God is perfect, he cannot dwell with sin. The, the fact that we cannot fulfill the righteous requirements of the law because we are naturally dead in sin, prideful rebels at heart. When we are born into this world, we are born under the curse of sin. And the book of Galatians describes the law as our schoolmaster. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. So, when you look at the law of God, his righteous requirements, his absolute perfection, we can see that we, as those who have broken the Ten Commandments, those of us who have lied, those of us who have stolen, those of us who have committed adultery, even in our hearts, that we are in no way anywhere near the righteousness of God, if we are honest, and that we have broken his laws, his perfect laws of righteousness, and that in so doing, we are all deserving of his righteous wrath and punishment for our sins. But this law, as Galatians says, was our schoolmaster. It showed us and revealed to us our need for a saviour. The fact that we fall short of the glory of God, the fact that we can never work our way there and be good enough, because even one sin is enough to cast us into hellfire. It leads us to see 
our desperate need for Jesus Christ and that we might be justified or declared righteous. We might be saved, ransomed by faith. So I call on you today as a summary of this whole video. If you see yourself today as a broken sinner, if you see yourself today following false philosophies and false doctrines, if you see yourself today like I have throughout my life, that I put myself first, I'm selfish and greedy. If you see this in yourself today like I do, then we need to recognise one thing, that this should drive us to the cross, that we come in humble faith lay down our lives before him, confess our sins to him, and that we need his grace and mercy. We call out to him in repentance and faith. We turn from our old way and we plead with him for conversion of our heart, that we may be brought into his kingdom and saved and forgiven for all our sin. God bless you and thank you for watching.